Hello, and welcome to History 101. I'm your host, Owen Goffrey, and on today's episode, I'll be discussing Ancient Egypt, also known by many as the Land of the Pharaohs. One of the greatest civilizations in the ancient world, the people of this land built its empire on the banks of the River Nile, which provided them with fresh water and fish. The people that lived here built their homes from mud bricks in the villages and countries. The land of the pharaohs was ruled by, well, who else? A pharaoh, who were a big deal within the overall hierarchy. In fact, the ancient Egyptians worshipped their kings as gods and held them in high regard as a result. They were buried in magnificent tombs with golden treasures and had wonderful golden statues built in their honour. And Egypt remains such a big tourist attraction in the present day because of its famous and ancient buildings that still stand. One of the most famous and well-known structures in ancient Egypt is known as the Great Pyramid of Giza. Or well, rather the Pyramids of Giza since there's three of them. This includes the iconic Great Pyramid of Khufu, which is still standing today along with the other two smaller pyramids. And as you can see from this picture, it was built mainly using limestone blocks and took 20 years to build, with its construction being completed in 2560 BC. However, a common misconception seen in film and TV is that the pyramids were built by thousands and thousands of slaves. And that is actually not true. They were in fact built by thousands of paid laborers who were buried near the pyramid and they were killed during the construction. Talk about a bad day. It was also covered in a different type of limestone at the time of its completion which gave it a shiny, polished look, and maybe a hundred people's simultaneous iron sores. But what we see today, that's still standing, is the base of the pyramid before it was given that polished look, as seen in reconstructions of the time. Although there are many other pyramids of Egypt, such as the Bent Pyramid and the Step Pyramid, which are much older than the actual Great Pyramid itself, these are not as famous as the ones that were built in Giza. Another famous structure that can be found in Giza is the Great Sphinx, which had the head of a man, and the body of a lion is still standing though. This magnificent structure was used to show how powerful the pharaoh was during his life and reign and seems to have the purpose of guarding the pyramids that are located behind it. Imagine this thing coming to life due to some ancient magic and wreaking havoc on tomb robbers that are trying to get into the pyramids. That would be the coolest part of a plot based in ancient Egypt. Life in the land of pharaohs was different from ours. There was no TV or electronics. A lot of ancient Egyptians worked as farmers as a living. As the Nile was used, fertilized their crops during the flooding season. And they grew things such as wheat and barley, but the most important crop was grain, which they used to make many different things, including bread, porridge, and even beer. How does that work? The ancient Egyptians were also great scribes and medicine men as well. They wrote mainly on a special type of paper known as papyrus, kind of like these ones. As you can see, these were made up of many different straight strips of paper that were put together and smashed with a mallet. And the Egyptians used them to record their discoveries and day-to-day -day life, as well as making other things such as reed boats for simple transportation. These papyrus, or papyri, give us a good insight into what life was like in the time and what their beliefs were, as they mainly believed in life after death. And without these recordings, we would never have an in-depth look at ancient Egyptian life, and we would have to rely on simple archaeological finds. And the only other places you would find these types of pictures are on the walls of Egyptian tombs, which were decorated with an Egyptian writing system known as hieroglyphics. Kind of like these ones here. You see these? These were different symbols that standed for different letters of the English alphabet. As you can see from this papyrus that I have here, it features Ramses II, the pharaoh, charging into battle in his royal chariot like only the pharaoh can. And paintings like these were used to show how powerful and important the pharaoh was at the time. And the pyramids and treasures aren't the only things about Egypt and its wonders. The idea is that pharaohs placed curses on their tombs were, to protect them were a big part of ancient Egypt. This subject has played a part in many big films, such as the Mummy films by Universal and Hammer Horror, which includes the now classic 1932 film starring Boris Karloff as the undead mummy Imhotep, who was later changed for the slow-moving, yet kind of dumber, Karis in later films, and in the 1959 film starring Christopher Lee. These films all follow the same idea, 
You've seen one, you've seen them all. Archaeologists discover a hidden tomb which is usually protected by a curse, and you can expect them to ignore warnings about the curse, which causes the mummy to come back to life and wreak havoc on their lives. As I said before, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Also, other films are based in Egypt, such as Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, and the story of Moses, which is found in the Book of Exodus, or as it's most famously known from the 50s film, The Ten Commandments, or Prince of Egypt. Unlike the mummy films, which are completely fictional, there is evidence to suggest these stories actually happened. In terms of Egyptology in real life, many discoveries have been made since the discovery of the famous tomb of Tutankhamun in 1922 by Howard Carter, including more tombs and mysteries about the civilization. Speaking of mysteries, there are still many that have been left unsolved. I mean, for example, what's the Osiris Shaft? Though for those who don't know, the Osiris Shaft was a mysterious chamber tomb discovered in Giza in the year 1999 by Dr. Sahi Hawass, one of the leading archaeologists in Egyptology. Although it's still unknown what the purpose of this chamber is. People say it's a swimming hole for ancient Egyptians to uh, chill out in. But it's not always simple when it comes to these guys, as we already know. The reference to the Egyptian god Osiris, though, seems to suggest that Egyptologists have found his physical tomb. Although there's no evidence to support this idea so far. Also, what happens to our friends in Heraklion, the sunken Egyptian city? Now that I think about it, I think we found the lost city of Atlantis. I mean, the real thing. It was not in the place we actually expected it to be. We're also dealing with a few lost tombs as well. I mean, where's the tomb of Cleopatra? She's one of the most famous Egyptian queens, and so she has to be buried somewhere in the country. This goes to show that even after all these thousands of years, the hidden tombs of Egypt show us that the civilization was one of the most brilliant in the ancient world. Now, since then I mentioned him, let's talk about Tutankhamun, the legendary boy king himself, the pride owner of one of the most famous tombs in ancient Egypt. This kid laid undisturbed for thousands of years until he was discovered in 1922 by archaeologist Howard Carter. The tomb instantly became famous as one of the only tombs in Egypt to have been left entirely intact by tomb robbers. Though, Little known fact, there was a few things stolen, but most of it's still there. Egyptologists have studied the pharaoh and his tomb over the years, most recently finding undiscovered chambers which suggest that the tomb itself is much bigger than originally thought. Originally coming to the throne at the age of nine, hence the term the boy king, Tutankhamun ruled his kingdom until he was 18, which is when he died. There are many different injuries on Tutankhamun's body, which have all led to different theories of, about the pharaoh's death. It's a famous mystery for a famous king. However, three major theories about his death are about murder, disease, or as I call it, a really bad concussion. Though, I think it was all three. I mean, seriously, consider the options. Falls off his horse, suffers a head injury, and then a chariot runs over his body, cutting off his lungs and crushing them. His father, Akhenaten, however, was a heretic, but we don't talk about him. Well, the Egyptians wouldn't like it if we mentioned him, but let's do it anyway. Let's just hope they don't curse me to walk this planet for all eternity. So, yeah, Akhenaten wasn't the most beloved pharaoh of Egypt, mostly because he did some questionable things, which included changing the entire religion to worship a stupid sun disk and getting rid of the old gods that have been synonymous with ancient Egypt today. Because of this, Akhenaten's name was erased from history within the blink of an eye, and his name was chiseled out of all the official records, and all of his statues were destroyed by the people who had to deal with this nonsense. However, despite the few hiccups, the Egyptian civilization lasted a few good thousand years before being conquered by the Romans, like all good civilizations do. The people of Egypt thought they were protected by all that really bad weather and all that sand. Well, yeah, they were wrong. Because I guess that the Romans got in using the Nile as kind of like a Trojan horse. This amazing civilization finally came to an end when Mark Antony and Cleopatra were defeated by Octavian, who was later known as Emperor Augustus. But I guess you would know that if you've seen the Shakespeare play or read it, or even seen the film adaptations. So, this has been my analysis of life in ancient Egypt. In the next exciting episode of History 101, We'll be taking a look at the legend of Atlantis, the famous sunken city, to see if there were any truth behind such an iconic story. Until then, this is your host, Owen Goffrey, and now I'm off to stop an ancient Egyptian priest from conquering the world with his undead army. Yeah.